So okay guys, today we're going to do a start a battle report um, because it was requested from some of my friends uh, using Hail Caesar rules. Um, it's a straightforward battle, French, Scottish and the English typically. Uh, the English are divided into two groups, into two divisions. Uh, one division is uh, under Talbot and you have uh, one, two, three units. A unit is three bases width and basically two rows depth. So, three units of longbowmen and two units of English men at arms and one unit of English foot knights. The left flank is commanded by um, Clarence and he has uh, two units of longbowmen, uh, three units of, three units of longbowmen, excuse me, one is in the back, the unit of English mounted knights in the flanks and two units of men at arms. <clears throat> the French are divided into three divisions. Fresh from the left flank, we have the Scots. The Scots have Scottish archers, two units of uh, Scottish uh, spearmen, medium infantry, one unit of Scottish men at arms, foot knights, and one unit of Scottish archers, uh, two units of Scottish archers. On the center, under uh, Alessan, we have two units of mounted knights, one unit of crossbowmen, and one unit of men at arms. And in the flank, extreme flank, we have uh, three units of men at arms, actually two units of men at arms, one unit of foot knights and one unit of crossbowmen. So it's a big battle. And um, what we start, we'll always start with initiative. Let's see who will start. And we have two for the English and five for the French, and the French will start moving. Now, the French commanders, and they are all eight, eight quality. I will explain this what this means. And the English are eight and nine. Yeah, nine is the Clarence. <clears throat> so, um, let's start with the first uh, order. I'm going to move the Scots uh, as uh, a unit, and I want them to move twice and move around this area uh, to protect the road here, the crossing. Um, to do this, we need to roll a six. And we roll a seven, that means that we have one move as a group. So the, the, the Scots will move as a group one. To move as a group, you have to all the units <clears throat> to be in command range, even the furthest units. And um, for. Um, so, guys, the Scottish moved as a coherent uh, line with the longbowmen, with the archers flanking the long spears and behind for support. Uh, the, another, uh, the men at arms of the Scots and the commander is the center. So they are creating a line of battle. That's our, that's our aim. And we go to the French. <clears throat> the French mounted. Now I want them to be aggressive. So I'm going to try and move them three times. That means 12 inches. They have um, the movement is how much I forget for the mounted. I think for the heavy infantry <coughs> is nine. All right, let me confirm this, guys. I'll get back. One second. Well, the French knights move nine. I forgot about this. Uh, so if they move them three times, 27, they can be very aggressive. They can move very quickly, but they will be unsupported, although they're two units. Um, they're impetuous. So as soon as they get into uh, three move distance, they are frenzied of the English. They will continue to try to charge. So better for me to control them at the moment and keep them close. So this impetuous, this frenzied charge, uh, at least will happen later in the game <clears throat> and at least I would have support from the French and the Scots on the flank. So, um, I will uh, move again um, my mounted and uh, crossbow beside them to once as a unit so I can keep them in line. Um, let's see, they need six, seven, eight, so yes, it's eight is the command the commander's quality eight, so we can have one move. So I will, good, I will do the move and come back to you guys. So what Alessand did was a um, strange move because we have here the woods and he's dividing the area and this division of the French would have been divided. And because we know that the French mounted are going to start uh, charging very soon, we move them all as in line, we move them one behind the other, so at least the crossbowman will be supported by the men at arms in the back and then they will be in the open in open area, they won't be divided from the rest of the army. I'm going to have only the left, the remaining division in the flanks from the other side. So, um, Alessand moved his, his troops like this, they're aligned. Um, 
and um, let's go to the last French command again let's roll as a nine and the French command does not move that's a blow for the French because there is a gap there in the back and the English may exploit it so let's go to the English now and see the model for initiative I want this English unit to move uh, to to move twice we don't have any shooting it's not closer than 18 inches to move twice and come around here again um, to create a line of battle and um, uh, against the Scottish so the English have eight <coughs> Talbot has eight and Clarence has nine so Talbot has three I could have moved them three times if I wanted but I asked for two so we're gonna move the English twice and to this area and uh, the another foot knights, these are foot knights, and the men at arms here are going to be directly in front of the French. Um, <clears throat> I like the way the units are like now because it looks a lot more realistic to me. You know, it's the depth is two bases, and you can have a really beautiful line of battle, and it looks much more realistic than these huge blocks I'm sometimes using. Um, so the so here is how things look. The armies are getting close to each other. This is going to be a big battle. We're going to have shooting in the next round uh, from the English, but we need to move the English division. So this will get a bit more complicated. This uh, Clarence will have to give two orders, and Clarence has a nine, so that's a good one. <clears throat> First of all, I need to um, close this gap here. So I will move my men at arms. All I will move this units all as a block the, the, the longbow man with support with men at arms will come here and close this gap and the other longbow man with the support of this man at arms will close this gap so you can in front of the French and this will be my first move so it's basically two moves so um, Clarence did seven because he's a nine leader he got a six so he does these moves. I will do the moves and I come back to you because we're going to do something different in the flanks. So Clarence did his first moves. He moved his men at arms with his longbowman here to close and uh, to close the gap between the two divisions and have <coughs> some firepower against the, the mounted because the, the Talbot's division, all the firepower is looking at the Scots. And the same, the division moved also here to block the path for the French with longbow with support of men at arms this gap is less than six inches so it can be done and you can move as a block here what are we going to do we need to give an order to reduce to change formation and make them align so i can pass them through this gap here so we'll give an order so we need two orders we need to move and uh, to change them into uh, a line from uh, the four so six and he can do it, seven, eight, nine, so he can do it. So the, um, the English mounted change into a line formation so they can pass from the gap. And they will move um, 12 inches, uh, nine inches uh, to pass from this gap here. Um, let's do the next uh, moves that is required. I will do it, but let's do them together. Um, I'm going to use these two units as reserves. I'm going to move them here um, and I'm going to use them as reserves and see how the battle goes. We'll decide uh, what we'll do. Um, actually, maybe the, the mounted will need support. Um, yes, I will move them here as reserves and we'll see what we can happen. Let's see. We really just want to move. Six, seven. Very good. So. Um, Clarence can do his move. I'll do the, all the moves and I'll come back to you guys. The English moved in a coherent line very nicely. I like the orders of, uh, of uh, Hail Caesar. It's very close. I mean, many of people who play um, um, black powder would be familiar and their moving system is very simple. So the English moved in a in coherent line to stop the French advance. Uh, the left flank of the English also blocked the space between the build-up area and the woods and the English knights uh, change formation to pass through the gap and try to attack the French uh, from the flank but currently um, they are in line formation this is very negative if they get attacked or shot at so they must be very careful um, let's roll for initiative initiative for round two 
Ah, sorry, I forgot it. We have shooting. We have shooting. Um, let's check the distances. The English have shooting. We did the um, so it is. Oh, it's more than eighteen. It is sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So it's eighteen. Um, So range attack 18 is long range. Long range, you have a lot of negative modifiers, but um, we will try. We will try. Let's have it here so you can see it also. Have it big. So you see here, you have um, range attack. Uh, the long range is 18 for bows, crossbows, and slings. So we'll fight with negative modifiers. Every unit has three dice. Shooting. Um, and... Um, uh, let's start the shooting fry phase. Guys, we can continue with shooting. It's getting a bit dark here. Nevertheless, I hope you you can watch, you can see. Shooting now, we're shooting at close range. So let's see the modifiers. We have three dice. The English, need a four, five, and a six. Um, uh, the target is... Uh, this this um, unit of longbowmen will shoot at the archers. The archers. So we need a four, five, and a six. Minus one for being... Um, uh, long range, so we need a 5 and a 6. So we need to shoot a 5 and a 6. Now, let me explain to you what happened there. Um, now the, 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 the Scottish archers will defend, uh, will defend with a 5 and a 6. Uh, they need a 5 and a 6 to, uh, their defense value is plus 5 to defend. But whatever happens, even if they manage to defend both hits, uh, they will have to take a cohesion test because whenever a shooter uh, a shooting unit rolls a six, you have to take a cohesion test. So let's see for the Scottish. They uh, don't defend, so they have uh, two hits. Uh, the strength is six, so immediately they will go to four before they become shaken. So this, we put it here. We need to find something else because this dice turn. And now they have to take a cohesion test. They have to roll a 2d6. And they roll a nine. So I'm going to do the procedure so you can understand it here. So we we'll go to the quick reference sheet and we we'll see uh, for a, the break test. It's a break test basically uh, from range attacks. If you roll a nine and your infantry, you hold your ground without penalty. So that's the procedure. That's how it works. So let's do this um, for the remaining. Now this unit of archers is going to shoot at the medium infantry of the Scottish. Again, four, five, and a six. Um, minus one, five, and a six. Uh, three, one, six, or so one hit. Now the English, I forgot this. Um, the English are marksmen, so they can reroll one lost uh, die roll. So we'll reroll one more. So they hit it loss again, but it's a six. So the Scots will defend with a five. The medium infantry again is five. So they are uh, hit. So one hit for the Scottish men at arms, uh, actually spearmen who are medium infantry, and they have to take again a cohesion because the English rolled a six. So they roll a four. That's not very good. That's very bad, actually. A four. And a four means... A four means that infantry is retreated disordered. So they will retreat disorder, uh, disordered. Um, <clears throat> um, and um, uh, they will uh, have to fall back uh, six inches. That's good for the English. They are disorganizing... Um, the French, the Scottish uh, line of battle, and they were delaying them. So I will do the, now. You know how is the shooting. I will do the remaining shooting, and I will get back to you with uh, the rolling of. Um, we don't have any hand-to-hand -hand combat, and there will be um, the movement of uh, and the shooting for uh, the uh, Scots and the French. So guys, we continue. I don't. I wanted to show you the shooting uh, here against the mounted. The English are going to shoot with um, three dice. But they mounted because they are cataphracts and uh, heavy uh, mounted, they're partial plate armored, you get a minus one. And a minus one for shooting, you get a minus two. So you can roll only with a six. Uh, so when the die that is required to hit is six, you must roll two sixes to uh, initiate a break test. So let's see the English shoot one six, and they are marksmen, so they can reroll one die. And they have five, so two hits. But this won't initiate a break test for the mounted because you need two sixes because you require a six. No, five is not correct. So one hit, uh, one possible hit. The the English knight, the French knights de de uh, defend with a four. So they fail. So one hit 
for the English knights, but the, for the French knights, but they're not going to take any cohesion test. They don't require. Now we need to finish the shooting there in the distance. It's far away. Now it's the French time to move. And um, let's see what they're going to do, because now the situation is getting critical. Um, I really enjoy this set of rules. I hope you will, too, when you see it played around. Ah, uh, the English, were, the, the Scottish were pushed back disordered. When you fall back from shooting, um, you can interpenetrate uh, easily without any problem uh, units that are behind you. So you just do as much moves as required to fall back. I mean, the move six inches was enough for me because my to move up back and become disordered. This disorder will move in the end of next round, of the round of the, when, in the next round of the Scots. So now this round they are disordered, the next round they won't, they won't be. But when you've push, pushed back from fighting, from a melee, this is another issue. You cannot interpenetrate, you need to uh, to have a gap or you need your opponent, your units, the units that are behind you to open the ground for you. That's another thing, we'll discuss it. But from shooting, uh, you can easily fall back without any issue. So let's roll for it for the French moves and now let's see um, what they want to do now. The French basically need to move as fast as possible towards the English. They cannot afford any more shooting. The archers of the French are quite weak. They're not uh, as good. They're levy. Uh, we're going to check uh, the quality very soon when you have uh, levy and uh, they cannot so they need to move as a coherent line again uh, at least one or two moves i don't know if i can move them twice i like these orders of um it's six and six twelve so you need three times so no i will move them once uh, i will try to bring them close it's more safe i can i think i can roll a seven no a nine and the scots cannot move the orders are not going through the scots are in trouble they're going to be shot again quite a few times. Um, the English, now the, the, the French at night. The French at night, we are less than three moves, of course, and now the only thing that you can do for them... Ah! And I destroyed... Oh, for God's sake, I destroyed Talbot. No, I didn't destroy it. Nevertheless. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and the French knights have to roll for a charge that's only the only thing they can do so what i'm going to do is with my mounted i'm going to charge i'm going to make i'm going to this you need two moves i'm going to move them here and here to charge this line these two units of mounted knights and um, basically i need uh, a seven a six so i have two moves one will be here and one will be here straight line charging against the uh, english line here uh, the English will have a closing shot when if this occurs. Um, so let's see. The French need uh, six. They're all an eight, so they can do only one move. Um, so they will be shot again. So the English are lucky at the moment. Um, okay, let me do the move and I'll come back to you. So the mounted knights are moving towards uh, towards the English, charging. They didn't manage to charge. Uh, but um, they are very close now. They can get their initiative move or the free move to charge in the next round, but this won't give them the charge bonus. So I will, um, I won't, um, uh, I won't do this. I will give them an order. Now, regarding the remaining, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, guys. I mean, should I put them here and, and, and charge from the flanks? and create a, a larger force or should I align them with the Scots and wait but um, in case the French Knights are pushed back we're gonna have problems here um, I don't know what to do uh, the English the French line is already incoherent um, I'm gonna move them here I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the I'm gonna I don't know it's a difficult one um, I'm going to try to align them, I'm going to make a line and I will try to attack the English who are a bit weaker there. So what I'm going to do is going to, going to put, make them into a line. I, I line the crossbowmen here and then put the mana times here. So let's roll, we need basically it's one move. So it's 12, so this anyway, even if I, I didn't know what to do, so <laughs> nothing happened. 
So let's roll for the line, the flank, the French flank that's down there and it hasn't moved. I will move them two moves to create a line of battle here to, st in, to go in the elevated position. So if they attack by the English, they won't um, have a deficiency against them being uh, lower ground and close the gap here. So and also do some shooting hopefully with the crossbowman. So I need basically two moves. So for eight, only one, so they can move only once. I will do the move and come back to you guys. So we did our moves. Um, we're going to have shooting now with only this Scottish unit because all the others are out of command. These are freshly raised troops. The archers are weak, but this will affect their hand-to-hand -hand combat, not the shooting. Um, in the left flank, <coughs> the French have moved. They divided their forces. Uh, so to close the gap, and here the two units of men at arms are expecting the English to come, so they're waiting for them here. So this is the French who have a defensive stand in the left, in the right flank. <clears throat> so we have shooting, three, three dice with five and a six. They're not marksmen, so they hit <clears throat> a five because it's minus one because it's a long range. Um, the English have to defend, no cohesion test required. The English defend with a six so nothing happens. Nothing else. Uh, occurs uh, so we will have uh, the English now um, now we'll all fully <coughs> full initiative because this uh, crossbowman uh, have moved so when a crossbowman moves he cannot shoot it has to be uh, move or shoot so let's roll for initiative and see who will get it the French will need it desperately to a charge <coughs> let's see a five and a four that's an initiative for the English so it's not a good idea to attack, to charge mounted. So, uh, I cannot move the English line here, guys, because I will lose the support. If I move it, I mean, and they go forwards, and when they, when these guys charge, I will lose the support from here. But I will move this line. I will move this line here. This line, I will move it one move. I don't want to be aggressive and I go to close range so the English can shoot against the Scots and, uh, and weaken them even more. So, one move. The English require one move. So, let's see. He, Talbot is... Okay, first of all, uh, something very important. Talbot is quite far away. So, maybe it's minus one. It has a 12-inch. Yes, and that's a problem for Talbot because he's moved, he didn't move. And the furthest unit of the command is more than 12 inch. Yes, so Talbot has to, has to roll with a minus one, he's out of command range. So he needs one move, so basically he needs um, a seven, an eight won't make, won't make it, a nine. Ah, very good, two, nothing, perfect. Not a blunder, I forget that. If so we did our move, uh, the, friend, the English left flank, right flank, has moved towards the Scots, uh, so they can shoot in a closer range and be more aggressive. Uh, the remaining flank of the division is staying here because they're expecting the attack from the mounted, uh, so they want to support each other. And um, Talbot is going to stay here. Talbot is going to be far away now from his command, and he's going to have to die with a minus one. Um, uh, so uh, that would be the move. Talbot won't do any move. Um, I would probably move Talbot to support his unit, his, to be attached. Um, and that would be it. Now the English here, uh, I will move them. I will move a bit closer to close the gap. And um, when a unit is in line on an online uh, formation, it can have one free move. So I will use this free move um, to uh, move the mounted closer. And actually, I'm going to be more aggressive here in this flank. I'm going to start moving here in the center to start. Um, uh, creating issues to the French. I don't want this French division to be um, to be able to move here in the center and create a strong line and flank me or attack me. So I'm going to be aggressive in my left flank. So let me do the moves. Let me check if I can do the moves first. First, the line, we can move one, that's fine. Um, I won't move the crossbow man also. I'll change them in line formation. I can move them uh, from the gap. So this is one move to change them and now one move to move them. But they will have a free move. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to move these guys. I'm going to move these guys straight to close this gap. It's very good. It's three. So uh, they can move. So let me do the move. I'll come back to you guys. So let's see what happens here. The English are aggressive. They close the gap and they're attacking the left, uh, the, the right flank of the, of the French. 
um, they, they managed to change all the units formation to line uh, to column, sorry, to line, to column, to pass through the gap, the mounted pass already. When you're in a column, you have one free uh, move, but uh, you are very, 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 very weak when you're attacked or charged. Um, now we'll have shooting for the English. The English will shoot at the uh, French uh, mounted, and they will shoot at the Scottish, who are there. And um, then the French will have uh, their turn. Um, let us do the shooting. Have you seen the shooting? I'm not uh, going to do it again now, um, so we won't waste time. And I will get back to you when we finish with the English shooting. So guys, English shooting was not effective that much. They didn't cause any damage or anything. So we have the French move now. Now the French can charge with their initiative move because they're close than 12 inches. Um, but uh, they, uh, I will use an order uh, because I want to get the charge bonus. Unfortunately, is I think it's over the tw over 12 inches distance. Let us check for the commander. Yeah, so he will get with minus one. Um, <clears throat> so he has a seven, eight that he has one move. So we will charge the charge, the the mounted will charge. Um, Orlean with Bushiko will charge at the footman at arms and um, Lair and uh, Norbon will charge at the Longbowman. The Longbowman have a closing shot of three dice, minus one for closing shot, minus one for fighting heavy uh, uh, partial plate armor. So they need a six. So they don't roll anything, that's bad because it could help them, but they can re-roll their marksmen. And they roll a one, so the English closing shot was ineffective. Um, so I will do the charge, uh, the, the charge move, and uh, I will get back to you with the remaining moves. So the mounted French knights charged without any hindrance from longbows, and uh, now um, Alessandro will move his troops. Uh, I want them to move straight and on the side so they can make a flanking move. So we need a six and a seven, or no, we need a, a six. So he rolls a 10, so no moves. So Alassane is uh, quite a problem. I mean, his division is divided, uh, but I will move him so he can get close to his troops. He moves with that. Uh, he moves as a uh, light infantry. Um, so he, the commanders move 24, so he will move, I will move him afterwards. Now the Scots, the Scots, are, they want to create a line of battle. I'm going to use to move all the Scottish line closer, one move. So I need a, a, a seven or an eight. And he rolls a seven, very good. And the Scots will move all together as a line. They are six inches apart, so and we don't have any problem. So let me move the Scots and I will move also Alessa. So let's see what happened. The Scots moved, the Scottish men at arms moved to close the gap that was left by the disordered uh, Scott spearmen who cannot move because they're disordered, cannot get, take any order. So the Scots create a line of battle. They will have shooting in close range, so they may create some issues to the English. Um, and now I'm gonna do, uh, what I'm gonna do in the flank here for the French, I'm gonna be aggressive. I'm gonna move the French men at times in the extreme left, in the north, close to the English. I'm trying to charge them before the English change into line formation. Let's see it now. Let's go there because we're far away. So what we're going to do here, guys, it's two moves, actually. So we are going to basically uh, charge, move once and charge. So I want to charge the English who are in line. So we'll be in big trouble, the English mounted, uh, now that they are in, um, in a line form, not line formation, in a column formation. So let us see. He is a six. So he, he needs a six. Let's see. This is a very important move for the French. Four, five, six, and he rolls, and this is amazing. The French are going to charge the English who are in line for in, in column formation, who will get very only one die roll. They will be the English will be in trouble. Are blocked there. Uh, uh, that's a big problem for the English. So, um, and here in this um, this unit, I will move one move straight, uh, so it can block the English advance. So let's see if we can do this also. Yes. So very good die rolling for the French. Uh, let me do it and come back to you. So what happened, guys? This is a difficult for the English. The Scots, the French moved here. They're blocking the 
movement of the English. They cannot shoot because the crossbow cannot shoot and move at the same time. And here, this is the big problem for the English. The, the French manage to get an order and do two moves and charge. The English are still in column formation, passing through the gap. And now they are blocked, basically. They are in big trouble. Also, the knights and men at arms in the back were supposed to pass a bad, bad move for the English, bad strategy. Now the French men at arms block them and they're going to ensure melee and the English have only one die roll and no modifiers. This will be a big problem um, for the English um, and actually it may, um, it, may, it, it may change all the battle um, uh, impetus. So um, we will have shooting for the Scots here uh, and here. Uh, here they cannot shoot, here they cannot shoot, they moved, and then we'll go to Malay. So I will do the shooting, uh, I will explain, I don't have to explain to you now, you know how the shooting works, we'll roll three dice. Now this is the close range, so let's see the Scots. So they, 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 they roll a five, so one hit, the English have to defend with a five, a plus five. So no, so one hit for the English, uh, and um, this is how we'll continue, I'll do the remaining. The shooting finished, and the Scots had a good shooting round, they inflicted one wound in the English here, and here they inflicted two sixes and the English didn't manage, they had to take a break test, they rolled five and they got disordered. So um, that's a good, uh, very good uh, shooting round from the French. And let's go now to Malay. And this is where things get exciting. And now we roll the dice for the uh, clash value of the unit. The clash value is... Um, the uh, charging basically so cavalry with um, with lance have nine nine dice so these are two different melees so nine dice uh, so these are two different melees so um, let's roll for the French first the French will roll nine dice against the English who are men at arms who are his the clash value is seven but they will have a support uh, three from the longbowman uh, from this side so the English will roll a ten and the French will roll a nine, but the French have the advantage of having a lance uh, that will uh, create problems later to the English while uh, they're, um, um, they're using uh, for um, uh, the morale, because when they roll it for morale, they get a minus one against lance. So let us roll and uh, see um, what will happen. Now let's roll nine dice for the French. Now the French roll nine dice, four, five, and six. So they have one, two, three, four hits, four hits. The English defend with um, a plus four. So the English defend two. So two hits, we have to remember this, uh, two hits uh, for the English. The English and men at arms uh, have uh, two hits. Now the English will attack with 10, plus the commander, who I gave him 2, uh, because depending what quality you have, I gave him 2. So the English have 10 a dice, plus 2 for the commander who is attached, although he's in danger of getting killed now. So he has 12 dice. The English will roll for 12 dice. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 2 more for the commander, 11, 12. The English have to hit with a 4, 5, and a 6 again. Obviously support is very important. So the English, one, two, three, four. Okay. So the English shits with the support they have, three, four, five, six. Uh, six possible hits. The French have to defend with a four. They don't have a double-handed weapon or anything. We don't have any double-handed weapons here. So the, the French defend with a four dice, with four. So they good are oh, good defense for the French. One, two, three, four defense. So two hits against the French. So we have a draw. So we have a draw. But we have to check uh, if the commander is killed. We'll do it afterwards. So we have a draw here. Nothing happens. Uh, if the both units got disordered uh, or shaken, they would have uh, uh, both uh, taken uh, cohesiveness. But at the moment, we have a draw. Uh, nothing happens. Two and two. Very, very hard battle. 
Uh, on the other one, we have again nine dice because we don't have supports. Nine dice for the friends. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They, they hit with a five plus. So four plus. So let's see. So one, two, three, four, five possible hits. Uh, they so guys, it's getting a bit dark here. Uh, let me roll for a commander death because um, uh, Tabor was fighting. He gave two dice roll so he can die from 11, for, by 11 and 12. So 10, very lucky for Talbot, he would have died, or well, at least we we'll have to roll again to see if he's injured or dead or uh, what. Um, when a commander gives one die to the attack, he dies with a 12, when he gives 2, 11 and 12, when he gives 3, 10, 11 and 12, and then you can do it on your own if you want to give 4, if you have Alexander the Great, for example. So the, English, the French hero, 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, 5. Uh, so let us... The English will def defend with the plus five. So, oh, that's devastating. No defense for the longbowman. So, one, two, three, four, five. Directly five hits. This is very, very bad for the longbowman, who will one more and they will be shattered. Five hits. And let them fight back. They're fighting back with five dice. It's their clash value. Six dice is their clash value. One, two, three, four, five, six. I forgot to put that. Tell you the truth, I forgot the modifiers. Here, guys because there are modifiers and you get a plus one for charging and I forgot about it and for winning the previous shaking disorder open order yes I forgot the plus one for charging no problem um, we'll do it next time so the, 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 the French have one two the, the English have five dice they have to roll they're six dice for the clash value of the longbowman one two three four five six and the support of um, the man at arms the back uh, the man at arms support um, you know, cheated, I, don't, I don't remember it by heart. So heavy infantry, uh, they're not having double-handed weapon, their clash, their support value is three. So five, six, and three, nine. So three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So nine dice for the English who are in big trouble. So let's roll. So a lot of hits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits, seven hits, but the French defend with a plus four because I have a better armor. So the French defend one, two, three, four, five hits, so only two for the English. Now let's see how the cohesion test works. So we'll do it now um, before we close for the day because it's getting very dark here. It's gonna rain, I think. So two. So let's see what's happening now. So the English lost and they have to take a cohesion test, a break test. They got five hits and they scored two. So they're minus three. So they wrote two D6 with a minus three and we'll see what will happen so the english roll 2d6 with a minus three and they roll a five and a four it's a good roll nine minus minus three it's a six so we go to the a quick reference sheet and uh, see the the break tests i'll go to six uh, give ground and in your infantry give ground in good order together with supports so let, let me do this and I will show you. So this is how the situation is, guys, can now at the moment. The English were pushed back. They lost the melee. They didn't get disordered, but the French will get a plus one for winning the previous melee. Of course, the French followed up. They didn't let it go, for sure. It's a good choice. Um, the line of battle of the English is breaking. This is a very dangerous situation. Um, the... I don't know, I don't know, the, the things are looking difficult for the English currently, and especially in the left flank. Now, what I have to do is now, we don't have any shooting, we have to do the melee there, but it's very dark, and we're going to stop it today, because it's very, it's very cloudy. Um, but the problem is that the English get many negative modifiers for fighting uh, in uh, line, not line, in column. And of course, all the English here are basically blocked, because they were all in column trying to pass this gap, the French took advantage of it. And they block them so their only hope is uh, to get something from here some aggressive move to try and support their 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 man the the, the units in trouble here in the in the north so this is how the situation is um now the french finish this they have to remove the disorder because the round is over i will do it afterwards of course so we have to do only one the melee up there but it's very dark i'm not going to continue and um what do you think? I think the English 
Um, they have an advantage here on their flank, but here in the center, I don't know. I don't know, things are still very early, but I'm afraid that English will be in trouble on the north here. Anyway, guys, um, thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying the battle report. Um, very enjoyable set of rules. Fast, like black powder. Uh, nice order system. A nice mallet system with supports. You have to support your units, back, front, left, pushbacks, changing all the time the line of battle and changing the, 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 the you know, the, the, what, what's happening in the game. You know, the, the, the pushbacks really change a lot the status quo, quo in the battle, you know, line of battles break, uh, flanking moves uh, uh, are created. Uh, it's something that I really enjoy in my rules. Anyway, guys, that's it for the moment. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, thanks for watching and we will continue next week. Bye-bye.